We're back, but with a reason, I swear, I think. Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics from Reach Comics New and Old to History to Anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. I am not Starfire. Yes, it's still true, I'm not Starfire. We did a review on this graphic novel and the fervor surrounding it. It was a lot of a lot, and so was the response. It was passionate, varied, and interesting. Which is why we're here, because some interesting points were raised, and questions were asked, and I want to talk about some of them. So I guess this is just a general response to some of the response. Rambling, if you like that, then stay tuned. I don't know, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop. Send help. Send Starfire. I do wade through the comments. It's a good way to grow. It's also a good way to steal yourself and also to see what people are saying. That's right, test your metal down there. At times, I do feel like Butters in that South Park episode where he's there because he has to block Cartman from the negativity of the internet. He's just getting sadder and sadder and more and more tired. Now, this video isn't going to be focused on whether people liked or disliked or mad at meh as in ambivalent. It's rather going to be on some of the varied reactions, the manifestations thereof, and just you know, some things that came up. I'll do an extreme cliff notes here. This is about the novel and the review. We can't rehash all that. That was already 35 minutes. So if you missed it, please go watch it because this is going to be a response to the things that were said in the comments of that video. So this will help contextualize it if you go watch it. I Am Not Starfire, a book by Mariko Tamaki and Yoshi Yoshitani, part of the DC Comics YA graphic novel line, and overtly stay at Elseworlds about Starfire having a daughter who is the opposite in almost every way. The daughter, Mandy, struggles with her identity and escaping her mother's shadow, and basically being a stereotype typical sullen, mean teenage girl. The story was mostly a coming-of-age character piece with some action-adventure thrown in. Those elements were more actually awkwardly hammered in. It didn't blend seamlessly with the DC universe very well. All of this resulted in an abrupt climactic battle with Blackfire at the end on the high school football pitch. You know, funnily enough, as ridiculous as this end fight was, they did foreshadow it. That doesn't make it less silly, but they did actually bother to set it up. It was a finale written for a teen drama. You wouldn't have been surprised to see some like that on the Vampire Diaries. Only with vampires. I went through the controversy leading up to the book, including it being negatively reviewed as early as late 2020 after only the cover and a few promo pages were released, being hounded all the way to its actual release and then after. Plus, looking at the book itself, the contents. And at the end of it all, I gave it a rating of Meh. With some people took great offense to her, felt it was code for, ha, huh, I knew that she hated it, or why did she love it? Why, Sasha, why? We all agreed that we're not Starfire. I just keep thinking of it like the I'm Spartacus scene, only I'm not Starfire. Now, let's take a look at some of the comments, some of the things that were brought up. This obviously isn't going to be everything, just some stuff that stuck out to me. It's going to be pretty informal, as was the first video. Casually comics. As always, read these things for yourself. And if you're a person who likes reviews or looking at reviews, I'd recommend looking at multiple reviews on multiple platforms. Then you can get a different sense of how it's being received in different places. Because people come at things a variety of ways and they have different subject positionings. I don't know, I feel like I'm just not as mad about this as some people want me to be. Be matter. Gruh. Oh, also, I must do a shout out to the comment who recognized why I was wearing a Nicolas Cage shirt in that and why I'm wearing one again. It's because he did a movie called Mandy. It's a metal style horror film. It had some great moments in it. I do have a shirt with a face on it, one of the faces from that movie that became a meme, but it's kind of scary and very distracting. There's also another thing you may have seen where he's sitting in a bathroom screaming wearing a tiger shirt. <gasps> sharing some appreciation for Mandy. Now, back to this Mandy. Firstly, we're gonna look at some of the ways that people suggested that the story could be interpreted. One comment I saw pop up a few times was the idea that this was supposed to be taken as an immigrant story, specifically a second generation immigrant story, which is something mentioned in the story as Mandy brings that up when talking about walking cliche best friend trope Lincoln and in a way relates it to herself. There are also plot points about how she feels about her mom's Tamaranian food, like when she brings wet bread as a gift to Claire's birthday party when they're kids. So it's something that she's embarrassed and sensitive about. They also highlight it in the story when she's making these types of foods. There's also that moment where in the heat of an argument with her mom, she mocks her speech pattern. So some felt that this was meant to be an allegory for that, and some enjoyed it as such, while others felt that if that was the case, it was doing it terribly, so no thank you. But that's another way that people are interpreting, and for some, enjoying the story. I found that compelling and plausible, so I just wanted to let you know about it in case it was something you hadn't heard before. I haven't seen that discussion point pop up too, too much but I may have missed it. There's been a lot. Was that the read you got? If so, pro, con? Another idea was that this story sets a bad example. This is because Mandy is mean and some feel unlikable and that she never apologizes to her mom for how she treated her, which was to shoot her down at every opportunity, no matter how hard Starfire tried. And then at the end, she gets powers and that's tied into it because some took that to mean that the message of the story is that 
be mean, get what you want anyway. Get the powers, get the girl, and I guess really that's it? The fame, sorta? Of. Grow out your roots? Now I highlighted both these things in the first video and said that she wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea and that for the ending, I personally wouldn't have had her get powers. Now many felt that an apology would go a long way towards humanizing Mandy. Mandy does actually apologize to her mom. It's in the most maximum cliched moment possible, but it does happen. It's during the climactic battle after her mom has been taken out. There is definitely merit to finding the story unpleasant because of how one views Mandy and the idea is being pushed that she's supposed to be relatable. It depends some teens have great relationships with their parents and have never acted like this at all. Also, some felt frustrated that they were drowned out or lumped in with people who were being cruel about the character's appearance when they had problems with their personality. So basically the idea that their points were being swallowed up in these other points and then they were being disregarded. A lot of people in this discussion just don't feel heard. That's part of what's driving some of the vitriol, some, not all, because there have been a lot of pernicious critiques out there. Now, as for causing a bad example, that can fall a little bit into the video games cause violence category of argument. Basically the idea that they're going to have other influences aside Aside from this work. Also, if the idea is that this work showcases someone mean, so it's going to encourage that behavior, that energy would need to be carried across many, many works and not just in the YA genre. Across all of the big two. It feels like some so want this work to go away that they're looking for any and anything to discredit it. The reverse is also true, by the way. People amplifying the seemingly positive aspects of the story to make it seem like it's having a hugely positive impact. People want this work to have lots of impact. I don't think that it does. Also, works impact people different ways and sometimes not in the ways people expect or want them to or they're supposed to. Sometimes not even the groups that they're supposed to hit. And also in general, some are simply more susceptible to being influenced than others. It's a complicated a topic, basically. It's nuanced. However, this segues nicely into another critique that some had with this book. The swearing. This book has some foul language, some potty talk. Some say it's profanity laden, that it needs to wash its mouth out with soap. Littered with F-bombs. And someone actually asked me just directly how many swear words are in it. So, I counted. A totally normal reaction. I'm telling you, this book has engendered a response so far beyond itself, which again, some will disagree with. They'll feel that it's justified, the culmination of a bunch of other fandoms all coming together in this work. Some not even in the comic space, but all of it leading to this moment. Let's count them. Let's count the filth. In 166 pages, we have four a-holes, one douchebag, one sh one tits, if we're counting that, one bullshit, if we're counting that, one bad if we're counting that. Six dicks, four shits, and four F-bombs. Of all the F-bombs, one is directed at a person directly and that's at Blackfire after she takes out her mom. I may have missed a couple of the smaller ones, so feel free to go and count for yourself if you're concerned that some were missing. I had to censor those because YouTube would hurt me. What a day. One cuss, ha ha ha. So how you view this is gonna depend on many things. Your miles towards swearing in general and works of fiction, how low you think the target age is and how appropriate you feel it is for them to consume such language. Also, how high you rate these various cusses. Mandy never tells her mom to F off. She says when she's talking about not wanting to take the SATs and she says she's not taking the F in test. Ooh, it's so hardcore. So she never actually cusses at Starfire. Granted, if I talked to my mom the way she is talking to Starfire, I would not be here. I'd be out back in a pit somewhere. My brother would have inherited all my stuff. Good luck, son. You're the firstborn now. Don't do what your sister did. The swearing in this book seems to be in keeping with the attempts made to emulate teenage speech. However, if that were the case, one could arguably say they should swear more. Swearing, hard swearing, out there and uncensored has become more common as of late at the time of this recording. Which again, different people feel different ways. However, a good example is popular teen idol Olivia Rodrigo with five songs in the top Billboard charts, two of F-bombs in them, one multiple times. Ariana Grande's hit song, 3435, had a chorus that goes f*** me till the daylight. And I've heard it played on the radio as both censored and uncensored. So putting the cussing genie back into Pandora's box or the bottle is a ship that has sailed, sadly for some. The character's appearance. Okay, strap in. Now the writer of the character being fat and that being a negative is still very much being hammered home. But a newer one has joined it or perhaps was always there and has simply gotten louder. Some feel that Mandy is too white, that she should have a different skin tone given her mixed heritage, while others argue mixed people can look any way, which is spiraled into a too much Caucasian representation or a Starfire is black coated. And while some of these discussions have been thoughtful, some have spiraled into uncomfortable territory. In general, the talk about her appearance spirals quickly. It's interesting because in some ways the roots of the argument can be viewed to be the same. The idea that the character has the wrong look or doesn't look the way the person wants them to look. This
This area though is often where a lot of the rhetoric got the most cruel. This video is a mess I feel like, but so is all of this, so it's apt. Ultimately I get the feeling that this is gonna go the way of Gotham High, which had a huge amount of outrage surrounding it and everybody talked about it and then it just kind of faded. Now it just comes up as a moment in kind of fandom history or comic book history or outrage history, because outrage now is history to chart. I mean it always kind of did, but it's easier to chart it now with all the receipts that people keep. As for reviewing it early, I view that differently than talking about it early and assuming that it's gonna be bad. It's very different to just look at the page and say I think this is terrible and here's why and talk about ad nauseum to actually going and leaving reviews and trying to get it to stop being created. Also it varies based on when people do that because this has happened before for various works. Look at the Powerpuff Girls backlash when that script leaked, which look that up. That script is <laughs> kind of wish that it would be made because it's a disaster. But I think what set a lot of people off in this regard is the cadence and what the content of a lot of the reviews were because while there were some who were talking about what they felt was the decline of aspirational heroes and the like, a lot of it just went back to lol she big and that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So some of the genuine critiques were lost in that or if they ended with that then a lot of people just disregard all the rest of what they were saying. I think the reaction to this work makes people feel a stronger reaction, positive or negative in general. I'm ambivalent. <laughs> so depending upon where you are or your mindset going in it could feel like some elements are being highlighted over others. This has led to some feeling that the backlash is being mischaracterized in various corners or that arguments are being shifted to what the argument isn't actually. There's much frustration. Now when it comes to this, if you are just a person who's charting backlash because you live in a sea of drama, then the best thing to do is just to go to a bunch of various videos and just go through and read the comments for yourself and see what people are saying and how they're reacting. Travel back in time just by, you know, going to early reviews and the like and see. Just so you can see if you feel that it's being mischaracterized or not. Again, you're the only person who can form a proper opinion for yourself after you've looked at everything. Fans are a passionate, passionate bunch. It's our strength and our weakness. A double-edged sword. Fall upon it. This has been an interesting experience. I will revisit this book at some point. I reread books just to see if I still feel the same way about them years later, or even just a few months later. I want to hear from you. Do you still have thoughts about this or have you moved on? I don't know. This, it lingered with me for a minute, so I just need to talk about it one more time. This needs to get it out there. Get out of the system. Talk it out. Did the drama and controversy influence you? If you've read it, how do you feel about it and the reaction? Are you in Mass City? Population? Salty? Let me know your thoughts down there. Talk to me. Tell me things. As mentioned, these were just a few things that came up. There were so many. People had a lot to say, so say more down there. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time today. I spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye bye I'm going to go read all the Suicide Squad content I bought because I am part of the problem.